All right, so you want to log into your WordPress.com, and then after you do so, most likely it'll take you to the to the reader screen. Remember that I said that the modern WordPress.com uh, website is mixing now like social media aspects as well as blogging. That should show you the importance of it. Reader is a way for you to follow other WordPress sites and read about their latest posts. And so that would be useful for us. I want other people to follow my, my site and, and read what I've got. But for us, since maybe we have a brand new site, uh, it's, not, it's not that important. So when you log into WordPress.com, you want to click on the top left, My Sites. And if you've only got one site, then it'll list it right there. If you've got more than one site, you'll see about switching sites. But once you see your website there, you want to click on the WP Admin. Yes. How do you log in? What do you click on the login? You go to WordPress.com and there's a button on the top right corner to log in. Right, but what email do you click? The email that you use when you create your WordPress account last week. So I'm going to select WP Admin to take me to my dashboard. <coughs> WP Admin will take me to the dashboard, which shows me my full dashboard, which we've seen previously. So let's make sure we're all on this screen, and then we'll go on. I'm going to look at the document that I gave you, and I'm going to jump around to different parts of it, because the planning part, well, for the moment in this class, we're going with hosted, which is WordPress.com. Eventually, you want your self-hosted with GoDaddy, and we can export our WordPress.com site over to a real full-featured GoDaddy. Uh, concept, we talked about that previously. Variety, we talked about that. And then you have to decide about doing it alone or not. Okay, let me finish my thought here, and then I'll help you. So, under writing, we're going to... Um, jump over here to look at the uh, the section of organizing. I'm going to jump over to organizing for a moment, which is categories and tags. If I have a bit of an idea of what I'm going to write about, I might have an idea of what categories I can create. So we'll look at how to create categories. On the left side we've got posts and categories. So only posts can have categories or tags. Pages cannot. And we talked previously that pages are the static screens that don't change too much. An about page, a contact page, uh, those things don't change too much. But your posts are what you're going to be publishing on a regular basis. Those change and posts can have categories or tags. So if you click on post categories, we have one default category which marks you as an amateur, uncategorized. So here, take a moment to think about one to three to five to ten, whatever, categories that might work for your blog post. We can always edit them, remove them, add more to them, Maybe I don't really have, maybe I'm a deer in, a headlight, in the headlights right now, I don't know what categories. No problem. Just think about one, at least, so that it's not uncategorized. My Victor's Bakery, I have the example here, my Victor's Bakery is I'm going to be blogging about cakes and cookies and pies and maybe recipes and all of that. So those are, those are ideas for categories. I need a name, don't worry about parent yet, and a description which is optional. So I'm going to create one category, cookies. I want to blog about cookies, so add the category. Think about one or two or three categories. I didn't write a description because that depends on your theme. Let me try to email. Let's try. 
Christ mm -hmm. and email on your password. Honestly, the only thing you can do is if you figure out if you're going to have to click on lost password and get the right class, and so there's no way for me to get on YouTube right now. Okay. Try them all. I mean, if they don't work, you're going to have to do retrieve your lost password. Or <coughs> Categories are keywords that people are going to search in our site or through Google, yes. But categories are also useful for us to organize our site through the menus. So I might have a menu that says blog, but then a drop-down that says cookie articles, cake articles, recipe articles. So it's just to organize and to get found. The specificity is going to be in tags. Categories are going to be the larger units. Cookies. Tags are going to be the specific ones, such as chocolate chip cookies and that sort of thing. So categories are the larger ideas, and tags, as we'll see, will be the more fine-tuned ones. And with categories, I don't want to put 10 categories. I want to put between, at the most, 1 and 3. 1 should be good enough most of the time, like this the sugar-free cookie recipe is going to go in cookies. It's not going to go in pies or cakes. But sugar-free cookies could have a tag of sugar-free, of chocolate, of, uh, you know, gluten-free. Because I could have gluten-free cakes, gluten-free pies, gluten-free um, cookies. So all of your codes should only fall under, like, three to five categories? One to three categories. At a certain point, you're diluting your message by being on every category and every tag because then the search engines will see you're not very specific. It's about people being specific. At a certain point, when you have too much, the search engines might think you're a spammer. Spammers put 40 categories, 50 <coughs> tags, because one of those is going to hit. Well, we're not spammers, so we're going to go with much more realistic uh, realistic settings, which would be one to three categories and maybe three to five tags. So I've got a I've got one category. I'll add cakes. Parent is well. If if you've got at least one category, categories unlike tags can have a hierarchy. You might have a jazz category, and under that have children categories for bebop and big band, and it's optional. So you have to decide if you need child categories. You type a name, you choose a parent, create, and now you've got a child category. And let's say I do write an, a description. Depending on your blog, this description may or may not appear. So if I write a category and I misspell it, you can hover over any category and you get edit, quick edit, delete, view. View will show you all of your posts that use that category. So this is also another way for you to organize yourself. I'm going to write 40 blog posts in a year and when I look at when I look at posts, all posts, I'm going to scroll and scroll and scroll trying to find my my post. Well, if I've categorized them, instead I can view a category and it'll show me all seven of that post. So that's also what's going to happen on your site. People will search a, a, a topic which will be internally a category or a, or a uh, tag and they'll find my posts. So here I might have misunderstood uh, your question earlier. I am going to invent 40 categories, let's say. 
but I'm not going to attach 10 categories to the post. If, if I misunderstood that, sorry. Yes, I, I can create here plenty of categories, but on the individual blog posts, I might only put one to three maximum categories. Yes. Um, I think that organizing, like you organize, like organizing yourself with a description, is it is it help with SEO? It could, but the description might not even be visible on your site. That depends on your theme. Some themes will will use different features that other themes don't. So if the design of your site doesn't use a description, it won't help your SEO because it's not going to be visible or findable by the search engines. But if your search engine does use, I mean, if your theme does display the description, then your description could help you with your SEO, yes. How would I know? Just to be safe, I would write it. I didn't, I didn't for two of them. But to be safe, I would, I would write them. And the way you would know that is you would visit your own site. You know, you would go to view your own site and poke around there and, and see where, where that text appears. So it's not obvious sometimes. Question over here. If you use, uh, like you said, Tori, but um, if you have the category as a sidebar, mm -hmm. all the Tori is going to be a free No, you can, you can uh, change that. You can have it show only you know seven categories or, or the top four ones or whatever. It is editable. You don't have to use all. You don't have to show all forty categories in your sidebar. Okay. So before I start writing, I this is something that I can do. I'm not saying you always have to create categories before you write, but this will also help you define your 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 strategy of what to write. Because here I could also make a category, for example recipe of the month. It doesn't have to literally just be a keyword. This also will help your SEO, will help your users find your content, will help you organize your content. I can make a category to be a complete sentence. My category of the month and my recipe of the month category will be about our monthly how-to series on our favorite recipes. This might show up on my theme, and that's good there. Those are some keywords that could show up for people searching. Add new category. And so recipe of the month. And again, that could be a sidebar link. Recipe of the month. And all articles, all posts on that category would be displayed right away. So I'm going to move on now. You might have great ideas for your categories, but you can do it later. If we go over to tags, this one oftentimes I don't spend too much time creating before I write a post, because this one I feel it really comes to you as you write your posts. Maybe I do have an idea that I'm going to uh, have some particular tags, but let me show you here on my personal blog. So one of my hobbies is comic books. I collect and read comic books, and so I've got a blog here about comics. And for example, here's a here's a post. There's a preview picture, and then a snippet. Continue reading. So just like I talk about in my handout, don't give it all away. You want continue reading. And then at the top here, I've got two categories: Comic Con and video. So anything that has a video is going to show up here. So all of these have videos. Anything related to Comic-Con is going to show up if they click that. So those are the larger concepts. Then, in detail with tags, I've got cosplay, costume, DC, DC Girls, Marvel. So I could have a category called Marvel, but I might not always <laughs> write about Marvel uh, enough to have its own category. But I might mention the word Marvel in a variety of articles. So on this one, on this one, on this one, older posts. So you see it's a couple of ways to for people to find. My theme showed my category and tags 
very obviously. Your theme might not. On your categories, try to be 1 to 3, and on your tags, try to be 3 to 5. This one, obviously, I broke my own rule, but you don't always have to adhere to the letter of the law, because here I do want this to be findable through this company, that company, and this one. So I'm not making, I'm not making categories for the comic book companies. I'm putting them into tags, because I might be talking about a Marvel movie, not really a Marvel comic. And so it's just ways to organize. So here on tags, I might not know what to, what to write yet. Usually I write the article, and then I look back and I say, okay, I mentioned these words, these keywords in my article. I'm going to then add them as tags. And as I write more posts, it'll suggest these are ones you've already used before. Do you want to keep using them or make new ones? So actually, I'm not really going to make any tags here yet. You might have ideas for tags now. Great, you can add them. Usually for myself, I add tags when I write the article, as I write the article, or when I'm just about finished with the article. Okay, so we're going to write an, a post now, and uh, so frequency you can decide on how often to publish, <coughs> length, you can decide that, but we'll see that WordPress tells us the length. Right now we're going to talk about title and description. So we need a blog post. If you go to all posts, most likely if it's a brand new WordPress account, you just have the built-in Hello World. We might have created one together last week, I don't remember. But now we'll, we'll, create, we'll create one. So under posts we have add new. Let's add a new post. People ask, should I write my title first or later? It's up to you because you might have an idea for a title. You write that and then your the rest of your post flows from that. Or you may be a writer that you're terrible at titles until you've actually written something. Either, either way will work. So I could start writing already some sort of article and later on decide to give it a title. Or I have an idea for a title so I can write it. Let's say Victor's Bakery here. So I'm going to write um, recipe of the month snickerdoodle. So this has got the keyword snickerdoodle. It's got the idea of the of the series within the title. It's specific, it's short, but here's another variation. What if instead I write how to bake a snickerdoodle recipe of the month? I've got the keyword recipe of the month. I'm going to have it categorized as well, so maybe I don't need it here. But here, then, I've got How to Bake a Sticker Doodle. This is another viable title, because it's got recipe keyword, sticker doodle keyword, how to keyword. I could write Our Perfect Sticker Doodle Recipe. Perhaps this doesn't quite as much fits into the recipe of the month. I'm just showing you there's many things to consider and to craft here also. If this is going to be part of my category, recipe of the month, this title might work or it might be off a little tangentially. There's no right or wrong answer, really. You're going to understand this the more you do it. But I'm going to go with snickerdoodle. <laughs> when someone searches, then my page appears. 
on the search results, it's going to have the word snickerdoodle first, recipe of the month, um, leading with the most important word, perhaps, the most important keyword. I believe on WordPress.com this saves automatically every once in a while, but since I'm old school, I would recommend at the top right, we haven't done very much, but at the top right I would suggest you click Save Draft, so that so far what I've written is saved. It hasn't been published yet. If, you're, if on your own site it doesn't let you save draft or publish, that probably means you have not confirmed your email address. I've got a title, I can always change it later. By default, the permalink will also write itself. And this is a this is a quirk that I notice. I wrote a different title a little while ago and it created this permalink. You think, well, that's the wrong link, the wrong name. I want it to be a different name. So if that doesn't change, you can always edit it. But usually it's pretty smart about taking what you wrote here and adding it as part of your address. Question. Yes. Um, you mentioned yeah, when we get to the part about talking about headings, I, I was going to mention that, but definitely that title that we are writing there on a technical level, that becomes heading one. So whenever we write in here, we'll have to start with heading two. So whatever you write at the top there will also be visible on your article. So on this one, I had just a preview, a picture, a, a title, a little bit of a preview snippet, continue reading, and then it shows the whole, the whole thing. Okay, so um, we've got title, we'll get back to description in a moment, and image. I'm going to jump over here to, uh, actually I'm going to jump down to read more. On your blog page only include a snippet of the post, perhaps with an image. So that's what I'm showing you here. If someone visits my blog and they look here, they're going to see a preview, read more. A preview, read more. I'll show you how to do this, because by default it doesn't do continue reading, it's going to show the whole thing. So notice I've crafted a little bit of uh, text maybe to catch attention and if they really care then they'll continue reading. So what we'll do here is we have a little, we'll write a little, a little something here to entice people to read and then I'll show you how to add the option to read more, continue reading. So let's say here, this is also the art and the science that I'm going to be honing as I do this more often. Recipe of the month, snickerdoodle. Let's say I often start my, my series of posts with a particular kind of phrase or a, a certain intro that I vary per article. So I could say, for our um, October recipe. We'll be focusing on snickerdoodles. The hard to spell, but easy to write, or easy to eat cookie. Or maybe even easy to bake. So I wrote a little something Every month, I'm going to write it something like this for our September recipe. We'll show you the um, lemon meringue pie. This, very, this is a variation on the classic key lime pie. So some sentence to entice people, press enter. On the next line here, I've got 
on my editing bar here, the third icon from the right, which to me always looked like the the the, the dotted line in the middle of a road. But if you hover over it, it says Insert Read More Tag. If you click that, that's where your article will be broken into Read More. Why would you want to move it? You're going to click well, here to show that this is where it's going to appear. <coughs> you have one line. Um, suppose I would like to break this in my third and fourth line. Could I do that? Sure, but to me it's logical that I'm going to write something and then I'm going to have my third line and then I'm going to add read more. But if you have too much here, maybe again you're giving away too much. Now, I just wrote one line, but yes, you can write a whole paragraph here and then read more. It's perfectly fine. <coughs> So that's the example over here. So I've just written one quick line here. On other ones, I might have more text, like a couple of lines. It's usually not too much text. Here it's getting a little longer. But then there's continue reading. And the way that the continue reading text displays is based on your theme. Some will say, read more. Some will say, continue reading. Some will say, more. It depends on your theme, the design of your WordPress site. Yeah, it depends on your theme. Unless they give you the ability to to edit that, you won't be able to edit it. So then after this dotted line, after we publish, you know, if this confuses people all the time, but uh, we have a preview button, and if we preview it, it won't it won't show where's my read more? Well, it's not gonna preview it because it's showing you the whole article completely. So preview won't won't work there. After you publish, you don't have to publish it, but after you publish, then Read More will actually look correct and work correctly. All right, that was Read More. If we back up to headings, and then again, uh, I'm not telling you a formula, always do it this way. You can always vary this. This is just examples of how I've done it, and they're not always the same, always. But what I'm saying is, usually then, at this point, I might write a heading here. I might start to write the headings. So here's some headings that I could use for in this kind of post. Again, depending on your content, this will make sense. But I'm going to have a section that includes the ingredients, a section that includes the directions, and then like the final like conclusion or takeaway, or when I think of a better word for it, the let's say for the moment, conclusion. Those are the three sections that will encompass this blog post. And I might do that over and over and over on my recipes of the month, throughout the months. It's perfectly fine. Yes? Is there a way to save a template? Uh, like, imagine, so we can follow these. Now I sit down and ask you to just schedule, you know, write all files that you Is there a way to make a template? Um, yes and no. On our WordPress.com, it's basically copy a post. So I might write a general post here and simply call it template recipe of the month. Save it. And I never publish it because it's my template. And then I do copy a post. So I make a brand new post based on that template. So there's no real, real template method like uh, Word where you can see a bunch of templates or create templates. This is a way around it. You create your own template, save it, but don't publish it. And then you can copy a post. If you've got WordPress on your on your Bluehost, you don't have that automatically until you install this plugin called Jetpack. So Jetpack should have a feature in there that lets you activate copy a post somewhere in the settings. Uh, how do we make a collection? Say we publish it. There's going to be a way for you to click on a button that says Edit Post, and we'll always go back to edit your your. You will we'll always have the ability to go back to edit the post. Definitely. It's going to be under all posts. Question. Um, instead of letting me do this 
regularly each time the Rebel Memorial and Heavens committed to the themes that are also already. You know, I don't think I don't think there's themes that have that. This because there's no way for a theme to know when to cut your you know, how much of a teaser to add and then when to add read more. There's no way a theme can know that because you're going to be crafting it and sometimes you're going to write two sentences here. Sometimes one paragraph. It's up to you to decide. So, you know, I, I've never seen a theme that knows how to, that does that for you. You have to set it. Yes? Yeah, that I've got I've got a theme over here somewhere that does the same thing that it just puts dot 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 because it is only going to show a built-in preview. Yeah. Um, okay, so these are going to be sections, and so this is where I'm gonna where I could select and then it's hidden. You might think, well, I'll make it bold and such, but we want to give it a meaning. We want to make this. We want the search engines to see that these are headings. Search engines like headings. And so, at the moment, I've only got one row of icons to edit. The very last button, if you didn't press it last week, toolbar toggle, press it. And that gives you one more row of a few little extra editing features. It's still not as powerful as Word or a real word processor, but it's got what we need, such as here. All the text so far is plain old paragraph text. I mean, it's got the same meaning. Everything means the same. They're all paragraphs. What you want to do is select, for example, ingredients, and go instead of paragraph to change that to a heading. We've already got a heading one. Even though I never selected heading one, it will automatically turn your title into heading one. You should not have more than one heading one. You'll get SEO errors. The search engines will say, well, why are two things marked as heading one? Are they equally important? That doesn't make sense. So the heading one is always reserved basically for the title. So we're going to start on heading two. So that one's going to be a heading two. We don't get really much of, a, of, a, of an option about, well, I don't like that font. I don't like its size. We have a little bit of the ability to change colors. We don't have that many editing buttons here. What we do have on the top right corner of the editor, visual, and text. And text then gives us the ability to write any HTML code we want, any CSS code we want, and, in, and then in a sense then we have all the power now. If we don't have a button for it, we just write the code. That of course assumes you know the code, or you know where to look it up. This is totally off topic, but I would recommend the website w3schools.com to learn HTML. It's free. HTML. That's a huge topic. That's a huge tangential topic. For us, I just want to write. It's okay that I don't have all of these abilities of, of coding and such, but if you want to educate yourself a bit for free, you can go here. On WordPress.com, we do not have an option under Appearance that would be Editor. When you have your own GoDaddy version, you will see Appearance Editor. And what that editor will be is a place for you to edit the code to change your heading once, which will require editing the code. So there's a way to do it, definitely through edit code. And sometimes there's a way to do it in your theme. So sometimes you'll see appearance, edit theme. I don't see one here. But sometimes I have a theme that lets me edit, edit theme, and then the theme author has given me a nice clickable method for me to select heading ones will be pink. So it's going to depend on your theme. And it's going to depend on if you've got WordPress.com or your own self-hosted WordPress. So you see here, I just showed off a little bit. I put in some colors. There's no button to put a background color. 
I wrote code. But anyway, I'll put this back to normal. Okay, so getting back to the idea of headings. Okay, so then you said, okay, if I've got a heading one, then I can't use any more heading ones. Correct. So then you might think, okay, I've got ingredients, I've got directions and conclusions. So obviously, this is going to be a heading three, this is going to be a heading four. No. You're not going to simply choose the next numbered heading because it's the next number. You're going to choose the next number depending on its logical meaning. So let me show you what I mean here. There's going to be a section of ingredients and a section of directions and a section of conclusion. So all of these could be heading twos. All of these could be marked as a heading two because they are sections they are logically top-level sections my syllabus, for example. I have a section of course information, course dire uh, direction and such, and then I have maybe a subsection here about send me an email to get on my mailing list. It's a subsection. So here, let's say I've got ingredients, directions, and conclusion. Let's say I've got gluten-free ingredients. Maybe I've got a variation. That I would mark as a heading 3. This is a subsection of this section. So the lower numbers are subsections. So logically then a heading 1 is the whole article. The next subsection are the individual heading 2s. I'm not always going to need <laughs> subsections of subsections. That would be heading 4. So usually you're only going to be using heading 2 and 3 usually heading 2, not that often heading 3, unless you really need it. Conceptually, maybe you're still not quite getting it, but hopefully the idea kind of makes sense that heading 3 is a subsection of heading 2. And then here I would start to list the ingredients and proceed. Question? Yes. Um, it you don't want to use the wrong tag for the wrong task headings mean that they're headings so if you use headings for paragraphs instead that's wrong semantically wrong and the search engines will see that and not like it so you might be wanting to use a heading 6 because it looks nice. Don't use a tag just because it looks nice. Use a tag because it has a meaning. So if I'm writing my regular text here such as crack the eggs and I don't like what it looks like, I'm not gonna select heading 6 because I like what it looks like. I'm gonna keep it as a paragraph because it's paragraph text and I have some editing features here, not as enough as I'd like, like on Word. But the, but the design of it will also be coupled with your theme. This editor right here, it, it does not show you what it really looks like. That's why you want to, at a, once in a while, glance at your preview. Then it'll show me my page in, in, uh, in the context of my site. I still don't like that they're so big and clunky looking, but that's the fault of my theme. Can you go back to how it looks, it looks on the... Well, let me let me finish this. Let me finish this thought a moment. Did that answer <coughs> your your question? Um, yeah. So yeah. Go back to the read more. Yeah, we're right, we're rendering it. The preview. You, as I said a moment ago, you're not going to see the read more when you preview no, no, it. That's not what I mean. So on, I'm doing it along with you. I put the read more tag in and then my ingredients below that. But then when I'm looking at the page, um, it's where the main blog page, where it's only showing the snippet, it's showing read more after the ingredients. Have you uh, saved yeah. and, and published and updated? Mm -hmm. Well, that's probably going to have to 
uh, deal with your particular theme. Let me go back to. So I'm looking at mine. Yes, yours. Okay, so it's probably my theme. Okay. Actually, mine doesn't even show the word "read more." This is a pretty dumb theme. I also hate that. <laughs> I hate that color also. But mine's not even showing read more. A person would have to figure out, oh, I click on the title. Not everyone's going to figure that out. And so um, I often have to give that response to many, and, uh, many questions. It depends on the theme. So you... You want to maybe test your theme a bit um, to see if it really has the features that you need. Yes? There's often plugins to, to fix these things, but I sort of feel that the read more really should work. It's like a built-in thing. But I'm sure there's going to be a plugin to give us that if it's missing. One other thing I noticed that I don't know if this is helpful or not, but so like let's say you're doing a recipe, right, where you want the ingredients, and if you are in the visual part of entering in the text, each time you press return, it'll do a paragraph, right? So you end up with a space in between. Yeah. But if you go to text and remove those spaces, then it'll it's kind of publish it correctly. It's, it seems like a bit of a hack, but is that the way to do it? It's going to depend on your theme. Okay. That some of these, <laughs> some of these, like I've got H two and such, uh, these are going to be translated into certain sizes depending on your theme. Okay. And if you know a little HTML, you might be able to edit the code a little bit so that it looks a little bit more what you like, the way that you're doing it. You know, if it's giving you what you want, then you might be doing it well. So that's, a, that's a, the, the ideas about headings. You're going to divide up your content into sections. You're not going to just arbitrarily choose heading 2, 3, 4, 5 just because they're the next heading. You're going to choose the, the logical number based on if they're subheadings and such. So it'll make a little more sense when I do this next point here. Uh, list, so bullet points. You don't always need bullet points. Again, I'm not saying always do these 20 things here. Do them as necessary now that you know about them. So for example, this lends itself perfectly to this blog post about a recipe. Because under ingredients, I'm going to need eggs, sugar, flour, etc. And these will look great as bullet points. So I do type them and press enter, and I'm going to get a huge space between them. But then once I select them and choose the bullet points, then they look a little nicer. So let's say then the gluten-free versions. So do you see the idea? This is still part of the concept of ingredients, but it's a sub-concept, so it's heading 3, because it's under heading 2. And then that one's heading 2 again, because now it's a brand new section. Directions. Under directions, that would look great also as bullet points. Crack the eggs. Uh, sift flour cream butter but that'll look better as a numbered list bullet points are useful when you don't need an order it doesn't matter which of these you buy first you just need them arrowroot flour etc but this definitely matters you can't cream the butter until you crack the eggs and sift the flour and let it rest for a little bit. If you add the butter to the eggs before sifting, you get worse results, let's say. So numbered list is very relevant for when things have to be in a certain order.
And so I just wrote the word conclusion, but I'm, later on I might think of a better, snappier name for the conclusion of, of it. How do you spell that? Bon appetit. Appetit. So uh, what this is, is just a little bit more text at the bottom. Obviously this particular blog post is getting a little skimpy in the word count. I'm only barely up to 43, that's half of my, of my length. But again, once you know the rules, you can decide to apply them or to bend them and, and so forth. I'm going to try still to see if I can write this to 100 words. If I get it up to 50, 60, 70, that's good. Because some, because some posts uh, might be artificially padded up to 100 words. But I'm going to say here something like uh, this classic recipe was passed down from John's grandma. And we give it a modern, healthier twist with the arrowroot flour. And go on and on and on. So now suddenly I've got 64 words. Getting closer. Okay, so I've got some text and headings and such. Um, oh, before I forget, well, we can do it in, after the break, but um, image. I might want an image or two. So again, I'm not going to go. I'm not going to go do a Yahoo search, a, a Bing search, a Google search, and look up sticker doodle cookies. I'm going to find a lot of amazing pictures, and I really have to say then don't assume that you can use a picture just because you find it online unless it is specifically marked as royalty-free public domain or stock image. So that's why I list pixabay.com. If we take a quick look here then we'll take a break. pixabay.com p-i-x-a-b-a-y free high-quality images you can use anywhere. So I might not get a thousand results, ten thousand results, or maybe I get forty results, but it's the perfect picture and it's legally free for me to use. No result. So I search for a, ter a term, I get 637 results. I would be careful here. I would skip the first result. These are sponsored images. This is going to take you over to Shutterstock.com for you to jump through some hoops. So skip the first string of results here and then you're going to get these over here and you know in a variety of topics. So I don't know these are quite exactly what I'm looking for, perhaps. This one might be close enough. So I find a cookie, or I find a picture, I click on it, and I can download it. And notice these sizes, a small version, medium, large, extra large. That's pretty large there. That's like print quality. 
So people are putting their photos up here for free uh, for you to use. This is marked as public domain. That's another keyword, public domain, which is another way to give away content or for you to use content that's been given away. Stock image, royalty free, public domain. And so we're going to take a break, find at least one picture, and click download. And when we come back, we'll put it into our post. And we'll talk about the details of, of using images in our posts. So I found one. I'm going to download it. I'm going to save it to the desktop. And when we come back at 12.22, then we'll, we'll add it to our post and talk about some nuances.